And this one I happen to think is a fun one because I'm, for one reason, Bill Hicks is my hero. As a stand-up comic, Bill Hicks is my hero. Um, I think Bill Hicks is the best ever. Just a legend. And it's such a shame that he died at such a young age. But uh, I don't believe that he is Alex Jones. I just find it fascinating. And I've brought it up before. And people tend to challenge me on it and think that he is Alex Jones. So, and, and I do cover any kind of conspiracy on this show. So I'm open to stuff that I don't agree with fully. I don't have to agree with it to cover it on the show. But let's see. Hey, Steve. Hey, Jeff. I tried to comment back to you guys while we were watching the video, but my dog was being a pain. And that's actually why I let it run a little longer than I probably should have. When I came back, it was kind of boring. I hope it wasn't that way for very long. Um, I was late to the show because I had a real problem finding a video to use for that. You know, because I wanted a good one. And I hope it had, you know, enough in there. There was something in there that, that I, well, there was something that was missing, actually, that I wished was in there. Um. There was a previous Alex Jones that's a different dude. Now, that could be as simple as he was using the radio name Alex Jones, but he did the same kind of show. You know, it's weird. Yeah, Steve says it's a very weird theory. It is. And, you know, um, in the video, he talks about how their teeth are the same. I, I don't think they look the same. I'm not a dentist. But when I'm looking at those teeth next to each other, I don't think they're the same. Now, one of these theories that I do think is fascinating about a, a person swap is uh, Paul from the Beatles. That he actually died and was replaced by a lookalike from a cover band. That's an interesting one. And I might do a video on that. And that one I actually could buy into, you know, I could even see how that could be done. But like uh, Paul said, he said, uh, Alex Jones is 5'10", Bill Hicks was 6'2". They aren't the same person and never was. Alex Jones used Bill Hicks' memory to sheepdog subscribers to himself so he could sell shit products and red pill them for the far right. Fact. Wake up, dipshits. Well, apparently Paul has some strong words for people that believe in that theory. I wouldn't come at you so harshly. I would just say, hey, think about this. Alex Jones isn't funny, you know, or brilliant. There are, there are Bill Hicks bits that are downright brilliant. So I just realized I messed up for the people on YouTube. For the people on YouTube, I won't be able to share the video with you because we watched a video tonight that I didn't make. So um, we watched a video on whether or not Alex Jones is Bill Hicks. I should have said that at the beginning. I'm sorry. Now I feel bad because I archive these on my YouTube channel and there are people over there that follow them. And uh, they actually, are, there's one that's trying to convince me to do the live feeds from YouTube. I wish I could figure out how to do them simultaneously. I know it's possible because I know certain people do it, but uh, I don't know how to do it. I, I have a computer in my pocket that I carry around and I could ask it and I could find out probably. And I think I'm going to try and do that and try to figure out how to get that going because I wanted to bright, I want to broaden the audience out because as you can see, right now i haven't really caught on on facebook so moving over to youtube wouldn't be that big a deal i do this because i like to do it you know um what was i saying i keep looking at the number and i should stop looking at that because it's just me and you steve i think so we're still going to do a show um i got some stuff written down and hopefully you brought some things you want to talk about Otherwise, it'll be a short show, but we'll still do a show. But I've been wanting to expand where I can share to different outlets at the same time and open up to a broader audience. So if you know how to do that, 
and you feel like taking time out of your day to tell me how, go ahead and let me know. Otherwise, I'll get around to it one day. One day I'm going to ask this computer that I carry in my pocket. I'm going to stop being lazy and go ahead and ask this computer in my pocket. What's going on? Oh, I'm mad at myself. I'm looking at something in my notes and I forgot to do it before the show. I had to work today. So I didn't prepare as well as I should have. And uh, I didn't make my own video for you this week. And the reason for that is I've been having really bad writer's block. I'm, and I'm in... It's to the point where I'm really just hard for me to settle on a topic. So if you could comment anything, any topic you'd like to see me cover, go ahead and do that. And that would give me a, a, a pool of ideas to draw from. <clears throat> because I've drawn my well dry. I got to start over from the beginning. I've been looking at some of my old videos that I'd like to remake. Like... Um, my MK Ultra video and my Montauk project video. For one, I didn't really know how to edit good then and I didn't know how to use my sound program in my editing and how to do all of that. I've learned a lot since then. And you can really tell, especially in the sound quality of the older videos. Um, so I'd like to remake those, especially the Montauk and MK Ultra one. I've been working on a project for to, to a script for an MK Ultra video for a while and I've scrapped it probably six times. I don't know. I, I think I'm trying to make it too big a thing, you know, instead of uh, just making the video. I'm making too big a deal out of it. I'm making it too big a deal, you know, making it so big I can't satisfy myself. I need to just scrap that and, and just go, okay, I'm just going to make I'm just going to put pen to paper and, and whatever comes out of it. I'm going to go forward with that. But Steve, is that you here? Did you have anything you wanted to get into this week? I'd hate to do a short show. I don't know what's going on. I guess people are busy tonight. There must be something big going on. I'm a pretty big deal around here. No. No, what I was mad about myself about, and I was hoping Jeff would be here. Well, I was hoping to have the answer for him. But the next Bilderberg meeting, I forgot to look it up. I'm going to look it up, and I'm going to put it in the comments for this show. Because I was mad at myself. I meant to look that up before. But I got distracted because right before the show, I had to learn what Pago was to make sure I knew how to talk about it if, if someone brought it up. Because I'm also in a Facebook debate right now over why I wouldn't support or don't support Nancy Pelosi. Which I feel like should be self-explanatory. You know, especially if you're on my Facebook list of friends. I've met you through political means and most of you agree with me politically. So it should be spelled self-explanatory if you're on my friends list why I don't like Nancy Pelosi. But some people have crept in that, that didn't read the warning signs and, and see that I'm a progressive before they became my Facebook friend. So I am in that debate currently. And I, I, I don't see why people get so excited because she's a woman, they're making such a big deal. Oh, such a powerful woman. Not just any woman will do. I would love to vote for a woman or I'd love the idea of a woman in a place of power. That's great if she's qualified, not just any woman. You know, I just think that Nancy Pelosi is a corporate shill and she doesn't represent my values, you know, and the first thing she comes out the gate with is this pay go, which is ridiculous and, and would shoot Medicare for all in the foot. You know, it wants to regulate entitlement programs. You, you do realize what they consider to be or call entitlement programs, right? These are a lot of the things that you pay into for your entire life, like your Social Security is considered an entitlement. I don't, you know, I think that the government's looking at that all wrong. Those are things you are entitled to as a right. That's the way it should be. So everything should be done to make sure that that is secured. Because those are your human rights and your dignity that is ensured to you 
as part of our society. But no, they look at it as shit they can chop away at. You know, and nickel and dime. You know, and then they wonder why a candidate like Bernie Sanders becomes so popular and gets such a large following and such a large following still to this day. <clears throat> and if we have legitimate election and a legitimate primary, a democratic, legitimate democratic primary and Bernie runs, he would win and he would beat Trump and he would become our next president. That's a lot of ifs. But. David says, I have never seen Bill Hicks and Alex Jones in the same photograph together. Now, I've never tried to find that. Um, like I said, I don't buy into it. I've seen a few people cover it. Like tonight, we watched a video from ODD TV about whether or not Bill Jones, Alex Jones was Bill Hicks. And I've seen more convincing videos than that one pulled down because they have Bill Hicks material in them, which tonight's video did too. So I'll probably get pulled down. Um, I won't even share that video on the YouTube version. I won't put the video on there. Um, if you want to check it out, it was ODD TV's video on Alex Jones being Bill Hicks. So you can go ahead and go over to ODD's channel and check that out. I'll add a link on the YouTube version of this video to that video. But uh, so you can watch it. Feel like you were here with us. But, yeah, I've never, I can't think of seeing them in a photograph together. And it's weird because they, they were part of the same management agency. And, uh, you know, had a co-worker, a friend at least, a, a lifelong friend of Bill's, and then at least a producer type, you know, involved in Alex Jones's life person. And uh, I forget his name, Kevin Booth. But no, Bill Hicks died of pancreatic cancer at age 32. You know, so if Paul was still here, I tried to tell him in the comments earlier that I agreed with him, but I think he left. But if you come back, Paul, and check the comments later on, I do agree with you. It's ridiculous. Some conspiracy theories are. This show and my prerogative on this show is I cover any kind of conspiracy. <clears throat> excuse me I don't have to agree with it um, we'll get into whatever you want on this show but uh, no they do look very similar and there's a lot of reasons to believe in that theory I just I just don't believe it if, if Alex Jones was more profound if Alex Jones said more profound and you know brilliant things I would be more prone to believe he could be Bill Hicks. I just think that Bill Hicks was a much better writer than Alex Jones is. But it's a fun conspiracy. I wanted to pick a fun one tonight since I didn't make a video. You know, I wanted to pick a fun one for you guys that we could just kick around. But I got other stuff wrote down that I can talk about that are real conspiracies. And uh, we can get into those, or we can talk about whatever you want. So go ahead and comment anything you want to talk about in the comments. And then if you're watching this later on, I want ideas for videos to do for you guys. So leave me any comments about uh, videos you'd like to see me cover, conspiracies you'd like to see me go into. You know, so I have that pool to draw from and I can get inspiration from you guys' ideas because I want to make the videos that you want to see so you'll come and watch the show. That way there'll be more than one person in my feed, which I really need to stop looking at that because I don't want to get, I've, I've made myself have a panic attack over that number before, <laughs> but it's not that big a deal, you know, plus I leave these up. And I archive them over on YouTube. The people on YouTube don't even get a chance to watch me live. You know, not yet. Not till I figure that out. But I leave them up and I still, I still participate in the comments. So if you're here later on watching this show, go ahead and comment and anything you want. And I'll probably still be here to talk to you about it. 
because I put a lot of work and time into these shows because I really want to build it into something bigger. You know, and if you'd like to help with that, you can support the show on Patreon. There's a link in the description on how to do that. Um, or you can just share it, share the show, like and share. Those are free ways to help me out. But uh, check out my YouTube channel is another great way to help me out, me on things and stuff right there. Perfect timing on that one. Go to my YouTube channel and uh, check out a video, share a video, like a video, comment. That would help me greatly too. Thank you and I would appreciate that. Steve says, I don't trust that number. I see more names than that. Yeah, sometimes I wonder because like I'll see hearts and, and likes go up the screen sometimes and it'll be like there's more of those than there is people here. So I'm like, you could be jamming the button, which I like, please do. But, <laughs> but uh, or it could be 15 people here. You never know. Like I thought, I thought that was weird because I used to come from politics and stuff's page. I used to do this show from politics and stuff page, which I may start doing again if they want me to. Because I don't think I would get banned anymore because I don't I thought I was getting banned because I was coming from their page I thought their page was getting it shut down or their page was being shut down and that I was getting kicked But I think it was because I was using the song mr. Crowley as my opening music and I don't think in and now that I've stopped doing that now that I've stopped using mr. Crowley I could probably start coming from the politics and stuff page again and I and uh, there I was able to look at more detailed analytics on how good the show was doing you know and I like that where I could actually look at that and see how many people actually saw it how many eyeballs actually saw them the, 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 the show because that number was far different from how many viewers you had at the show David says coincidence about the picture I don't believe in coincidence well, it's possible that they never met each other, but doesn't Bill, Alex talks about knowing or meeting Bill, doesn't he? I don't know. Steve says my Mandela video has like 13,000 views. Yeah, one of my Mandela videos blew up. Yeah, the 15 more insane Mandela effects. It, it, it got kind of popular. It's up to like 13,000, like Steve says, I think it just passed 14,000 views. So I'm excited about that. It's only a month old. Um, I didn't mean for it to sound like I'm down. I, I'm, I'm excited. I do these shows because I like doing these shows. And uh, I hope you like watching them. But I, you know, I do it for me just as much as, you know, for you. I like making the videos for you guys. But, uh, of course, I wanted to get it out to the largest audience I possibly can. So... I may start trying to come from politics and stuff again if they'll have me back because I don't think now that I'm using my own music, I don't think I'll get banned. But uh, let's see. I wrote down some stuff we can get into. I think we've got some time left. We've got a little bit of time left. If you guys want to get into something, go ahead and comment in the comment section, anything you want. I have some stuff written down. Um. These could also be future videos. These were things I these are ideas I've been kicking around for a video at least. Like one of them is on how we are slaves to technology. This is an idea that has been fascinating me recently. Um, I've seen a lot of cool art about this that I would like to include in my video if I could, where it shows how we're we're like zombie like. And we're just slaves to these screens that we carry in our hands. It's fascinating. So I wanted to get into a topic about that and figure out how to make that into a video. And I felt like it kind of tied in with uh, another video idea I've been kicking around, which is 1984 Come to Life, which I think those two could go together. They could, they could combine and merge and make some kind of – something's there. You know, if I dig around in that pit long enough, something's there. So I think I can find something to make there. And, and I need to make a new RFID chip video because if you follow this show, you know that my RFID chip video got banned worldwide on YouTube. So I got to make a new one. And the reason it got banned worldwide is because I used a clip from the Dr. Oz show 
Um, and the only reason why I used a clip from the Dr. Oz show is because it had a pretty good explanation of the scientific stuff behind RFID that I can't, that I'm not technically qualified to even get into. You know, I could sit here. You know, this show could be me with a light bulb, with a, you know, a strobe light in my face, sitting here, or a, a bright light in my face, talking to you about conspiracies and just making up and rattling off bullshit. But I wanted to include some scientific data in the video, so I used the Dr. Oz clip. And uh, it got me banned worldwide. Steve says, I find robots and AI fascinating. I do too. Um, and I'm very concerned with how concerned a lot of genius people people are about AI like Elon Musk and um, I think Stephen Hawking was concerned with AI as well that concerns me because they're a lot smarter than me so it makes me want to know well what, what are you afraid of so Elon Musk paints a picture that's very much like Terminator 2 come to life which is terrifying but he says we won't survive it not unless we merge with the machines if we accept implants and become one with the machines, we won't survive the AI revolution or whatever. Isn't that crazy? And, and he says we're too far gone already. So they've already put too much in the hands of computers, he says. And he knows more than I do. So that concerns me. But uh, yeah, I want to make a new RFID chip video. But I learned something fascinating making my Yellow Vest protest video, which I hope you watch. And if not, check it out on my channel, my YouTube channel, Me on Things and Stuff. But uh, I learned that the, uh, the RFID chip may not be a chip implant at all. Um, in France, in the next five years, everyone is going to have a data ID card like a credit card, except it's got all, like exactly like the RFID chip, it's got all your information, all your data, all that's on this card, uh, the, little, the little microchip, just like your credit card. They might have just made it as simple as that, just a card you carry in your wallet, not implant in your body at all, but just carry a card. And then maybe the next step will be the implant. Maybe they're gonna baby step us into it, but within five years, by 2022, France has pledged to have every citizen digitized and on ID cards. So I find that fascinating. That I just find the mark of the beast, the RFI, whether you think in the mark, whether you think the RFID chip is the mark of the beast or not, it is definitely a bad thing. I believe it's the mark of the beast, um, but I am someone of faith. I respect those that aren't. I think you can still agree with me that it is a bad thing. <laughs> you don't want everything on one little chip that is controlled and out in the cloud and able to, you can be cut off from it in, in, in an instant, it can be tampered with, can be stolen from. Not to mention, I'm not letting you put it in me. I know I'm not going to allow an insert a chip into myself. And what if that means I'll be destitute? What if that means I won't be able to survive in society without it? Then I guess I'd have to go live off the grid. Babels would have to hunt and kill my food for me because I can't kill an animal. Which a lot of uh, me, our, our vegetarians would probably tell me is that I shouldn't eat one either. Because if I couldn't do that, then I shouldn't. And I probably shouldn't, but I still do. Which is pretty shitty, probably, but I don't know. Bacon is delicious. Another thing I have wrote down to talk about, which is kind of along the, along the lines of uh, AI and robots, is 5G. The dangers of 5G, and I almost played a 5G video for you actually tonight, but I thought it would be more fun to do something fun to play like the Alex Jones video 
and talk about it. I'm kind of bummed out that a bigger conversation didn't break out about the Alex Jones video, but maybe it will later on in the comments. If, if I let this simmer, maybe later on in the night, there'll be more comments about the Alex Jones video. But uh, I just thought that was a fun one to kick around. I think I probably let it play too long. Um, and I, but I thought it was fun. But you guys, um, Steve says our future is pretty scary. It is. It really is. I mean, not to mention just the damage we've done to the planet. And uh, another thing I really want to make a video on and go into, and it's not a conspiracy, it just needs attention, is the Fukus Fukushima disaster. And uh, nuclear waste into the ocean as a result of it ever since and still going on. It can't be stopped. Just polluting the ocean at a massive rate. So, Steve, you believe 50-50 that Alex Jones is Bill Hicks. You're that. So, you're if you gave it a percentage, you'd be right on the line. You're right on the fence, 50-50. See, for me, it's like 85-15. 85 no, 15 yes. They do look similar. I'll give you a few things. but uh, And there's a lot of weird coincidences involved in the story. But I just, like I said, I've never heard anything profound out of Alex Jones. I just don't believe that everything profound that that man had to say came out in his first 32 years and that he went on and lived his life as this other person and never wrote another profound thought. That's hard for me to buy. So that's why I can't buy into it because and maybe you got to have as much respect for Bill Hicks as I do which is probably why I let that video play as long as I did because they, they used a lot of Bill Hicks bits and I love Bill Hicks. So I would just, I'd be like, ooh, another Bill Hicks bit. And I'd let it play a little longer through another segment. But I really wasn't going to let it play very long if it wasn't interesting. Because like I said, I had a hard time finding a good video to show you guys. And I finally gave up and just settled on that one. Went to my list of videos that I've watched before. And I thought I liked it. But when I watched it the second time, I was like, What's going on too long? So the pacing is wrong on this video. Not even thought about making one, but you know, it's more fun for me when I actually believe in the conspiracy. I've yet to make a video for you that I don't believe in, that I can't stand behind. But it'd be interesting to make one where I'm just making the video and I don't buy into it. I think that'd be fun and it'd be a good challenge for me to be impartial and just Lay it out there. So feel free to comment anything you'd like to see me make a video on. And I may make it even though I don't agree with it. But uh, we got uh, three people here. So if there's anything you guys want to get into before we wrap up, I'll give you a little more time if you want. Go ahead and comment anything you want to talk about and we'll kick it around. But if not, we're going to wrap up here pretty soon. Thank you for coming. And if you come later, thanks for coming. And uh, hopefully you participated and commented on, on the show because I love that. And uh, I will be here and reading the comments and getting back to you guys. So thanks for coming. We do this every Friday at 6.30 Central, 6.30 p.m. Central time from my Facebook page. Unless I start coming from the politics and stuff page again. But if I do, I'll let you know before we make the change. And because uh, I'd like to get more traffic to the show and out to a wider audience. And I used to come from there, but I had to stop because, well, I thought it was because of, of the being on their channel because I didn't seem to get blocked from my page. But it was the song I was using. And the reason why I was getting kicked by using that song on their page is because I was getting out to a bigger audience. So they were just kicking the video, kicking the feed instead of muting me. When I would come from my own page, they would just mute the video. You know, they had a different approach. But I was getting kicked like I was because of Mr. Crowley. Clinton says, sup, brother. Missed the whole session, but much love and respect. How about Las Vegas? 
Okay, uh, we can kick around Las Vegas a little bit. I'll only be able to broad stroke it with you. Um, I've seen a lot of stuff about the Mandalay Bay shooting. That's what he's talking about. The, well, everybody should know it's the largest mass shooting in, in United States history. The country concert at the Mandalay Bay in Vegas. Uh, so uh, I can give you my thoughts on it. For one, I think Stephen, pa Stephen Paddock is a patsy. I believe that I don't believe he was the only shooter. Um, I don't really buy in. I think that these events happen. I don't buy in. There's theories kicked around that it was fake. The, the whole thing was fake. And you'll, you'll hear that with all of these shootings. You'll hear one theory where it'll be fake, another theory that it's a false flag. Um, you know, there'll be all kind of different varieties. I don't buy into the fake. I think they really do kill these people. But I think that there are staged incidents, and I think this was one of them. And I think Stephen Paddock is your patsy. Um, he may have been involved in the arms deal for the shooting, but they just sold him out and used him. I don't know that he actually ever even got to pull a trigger in the event. I believe he was involved in the planning up to the event, but he was their patsy left to take the whole rap for everything. And it's already been proven that he wasn't even in that hotel room by himself. Um, the room service receipts show two people in the room. And Clinton says, still no video. Las Vegas, most CCTV in the nation. Absolutely. Those, those buildings, those casinos, and Las Vegas itself is highly protected, highly surveilled city. Like very high tech surveillance. The best are in these casinos. And they got nothing on Stephen Paddock bringing all these guns into his room, setting up cameras, you know, doing all the stuff that he would have had to done to secure this penthouse room to, to, to carry out the shooting as he did and carry out the standoff with police as he did. Clinton says, my opinion, stage black ops. My opinion too, something along those lines. Um, a, a false event, false flag event, basically. Now, for what reason and what purpose, I couldn't tell you. You know, if it was to help Jason Aldean's career, I don't think it did. He did get a Saturday Night Live appearance out of it, which I thought was kind of shitty. I would have turned that down. I mean, I don't want to be famous for being the guy who was on stage when they started shooting. You know, he, who did he play with that night on Saturday Night Live, Tom Petty? Even if it meant I got to play with Tom Petty, I don't think I'd want to be famous for that, you know? Especially since he's responsible for a lot more deaths than people give him credit for because his stage crew threw the floodlights on when he ran off stage. When he heard shooting, he ran off stage and they threw the floodlights on the crowd. So he made it easier on the shooters. So if anything, Jason Aldean is no hero at all. He didn't get on the mic and say, or even take the mic with him. You know, nowadays they're all wireless mics. Take the mic with him. Hey, guys, there's a shooter in the crowd. There's a, somebody shooting. Clinton says bump stocks out loud as a result. So you think that it was all a push for bump stocks? Could be. Could be. Could be gun grab pushes. Hey, Valerie. How you doing? Right now, we're kicking around the Mandalay Bay shooting conspiracy theories. Um, just really, really, all I'm doing right now is breaking down my views on it. All I've really covered so far is that I think Stephen Paddock was nothing more than a patsy. It's going good. How are you? So Clinton says gun control vote on floor coincidentally at the same time. Yeah, it could be. Could be. And there's always bigger things at play. You know, they're moving things or, or covering up an event with another event in these staged operations. But like I said, that's what I think it was. I do think people died. I do think people were shot. But I do think there were multiple shooters. And um, I think that's proven. 
I've seen enough to prove it to me that at least there were multiple shooters. Um, there's interesting video you can look up. And if I ever make a video on the Mandalay Bay shooting, I would include it. Um, shot from a cab where you can see there's different shooters. And you can actually see it in the news footage because you see flashes coming from about 15 floors lower and to the right. If you're looking at the screen, and then from the cab footage, you also see flashes coming from the top of the parking structure. So it's the multiple shooters. I'm 100% on board with the multiple shooters. He definitely did not act alone. They wanted to look like he was left. He acted alone. They set him up to act, look like he was acting alone, but he did definitely did not act alone. And then there's there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, yeah. Clinton says it definitely happened, but not by Paddock. I feel the same way. I'm I'm on the page that definitely it's a real event. Definitely people were hurt. Definitely people were killed. But it was definitely not carried out by Stephen Paddock, and people need to. It's weird how it went away so fast, isn't it? It doesn't it seem like it went away really fast. It just got swept under the rug super quick. If you really consider it's the largest shooting on American soil in history. Like it's hardly spoken about anymore. You know, I've never seen anybody get to the bottom of why their guest receipts show two people in the room. We've never gotten to the bottom of that. We've never gotten to the bottom of a lot of things. We've never gotten to the bottom of how weird his brother is. And then all of his weird, all of Stephen's weird trips. Stephen was obviously some kind of a gun runner for the CIA. He even had a history of flying for them, flying a his private plane for the CIA. I think he was running weapons, and probably drugs as well. Clinton says multiple shooters, hundred percent digital confirmation. Steve says the Vegas story was full of holes and that sheriff looked scared as fuck. Oh, didn't he? And then you got that, what, the FBI guy standing right over his shoulder at all times, tapping him, telling him when to shut up. Yeah, there's a lot of weird in that story. And um, I'm not buying the official version. That's another one that needs a real investigation. It needs, because cut because I feel like there were real victims, because I feel like people really died, that is why I feel like it needs a real investigation. People don't understand. They think you're being disrespectful to the victims. That's absolutely not true. And that's, you're just gaslighting. You're just distracting from the truth and from the point. We're, we're pushing for the truth in these instances for the victims and for everyone else. Like these are, these are false staged events used against you for whatever means, who knows what means. It doesn't really matter. But it doesn't mean that we don't believe the event took place and that people were hurt. If anything, it means we care about them on a deeper level because we want them to get actual justice. Not just the bullshit story that is fed to you by the establishment. It's full of holes like Swiss cheese. Steve says... Uh, didn't they find pedo porn on the brother? There was something. I couldn't think of it, so I wasn't even going to say, but I knew it was bad. Um, but there was something like that. I got to look into it. I may actually do, there may actually be enough here for a really good video. I just don't know exactly where I fall. I don't know if that's a good video where you, where you just go, hey, I settle on this, that Stephen Paddock is a patsy, and I believe this was some kind of... Uh, you know, black ops, you know, at least mercenaries carried out multiple shooters type of event, orchestrated event. That's what I was looking for. That was the more simple way I could have said everything that I just tried to spit out of my mouth, aggressively forced from my tongue. It looks like we got some people showing up now, so I can go a little longer. If you guys are into the Vegas stuff, we can talk about that a little more. If you want to talk about Stephen Paddock and his CIA connections and you want to talk about his weird trips or his weird brother or any of that or the 
room service receipts. David says he heard he had 11 toes. That's fascinating. And if he had six fingers on his, what, left hand as well, he could be an Ego Mentoya. And then we would have to kill him. Or no, no, the dude's name was Inigo Montoya, right? You killed my father, prepare to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inigo Montoya will kill you if you have six fingers on your left hand and your left toes. Steve, uh, we actually, on another one of these where I was kicking around one for fun, we watched a video on that, on whether or not Aleister Crowley is Barbara Bush's father. And it is creepy, and I buy into that one. <laughs> I think he is. He could be. Her mother was around him during the time that he was, uh, that she would have been conceived. So the time works out, and she looks just like him. And that's a little odd. I'm sorry, but that is just extremely odd. Put a picture of them side by side. She is. She looks just like her daddy. And uh, so, yeah, I, I buy into that Aleister Crowley is Barbara Bush's father. I definitely buy into that theory. And I, I should make a video on it because the one that I found was good, but I could make a, you know, I could make one too. It would give me something to do. It's a good idea for a video, Steve. Thank you. If you have a video idea that you'd like to see me do, go ahead and add it in the comments, and I would love to hear from you, and I will cover your ideas. Steve says the Bush family is evil. The Bush family is evil to its core. Oh, my God. Look into the Bush family. Look into Prescott Bush. Look into their All Skull and Bones members. You know, probably all the way back to Daddy Prescott, but Skull and Bones is a satanic Luciferian organization. It's part of the secret societies that tie together to run our world. The, the Bush family is very powerful. George H.W. Bush was extremely powerful and a very big player in the New World Order agenda. The Bush family is evil. David says left. I never said left. I assumed. I was trying to make it fit my joke. <laughs> Clinton family also evil. Evil. Very tied in with the elites and the establishment that runs this world. Handpicked to, to be rulers in it. Because those people that are handpicked by the establishment to run for office and be in power, they aren't really in power. They're faces you know placeholders for the people that really are in power that tell them what to do at best real politicians are rare most of them are actors professional con artists that just scam you get people to go along with things basically against your own better judgment or better interests And then people wonder, I because I promote voting. People wonder how you can have that ideas, how you can think that about the government and about politicians and still feel like you should vote. Well, the reason for that is if we voted correctly, if we all used the power of our vote and voted correctly and voted intelligently and voted for progressive candidates and issues, these things could succeed. But it would take unraveling and un undoing the entire system. It would take a lot of work. It would take a lot of time. You would have to vote a lot of people out of office. I'm not saying it's the best course of action. I'm saying it's one course of action. And I'm saying it's lazy not to do it. Um, it's easy to do. And if people actually did it, we would see actual change. Just like if more people actually rose up in protest and came together and unified, we would see actual change, which is why they spend so much effort and so much time into keeping us divided and making sure that that doesn't happen. Clinton says cover spirit cooking. 
and then Steve says the evil Podesta brothers. Oh my God. The, the one that's not famous, um, you know, everybody of course knows John Podesta because he did such an awesome job running Hillary Clinton's campaign and keeping their emails private, especially his own. He did such a great job of that. So everybody knows who he is, but his brother, his brother is even worse than him. You know, I don't, if you looked into the WikiLeaks, you saw a lot of transcriptions of, uh, or actual emails between the two of them. And you saw the things they talk about, but you should look into his brother's art collection at his, his brother's house. The things that his brother considers art are just straight up pedophilia. Just one of these pictures, I swear they're haunting. I don't know if I could do them justice if I tried to explain them, but in every one of them, it's children in compromising positions. And um, one of them, let me try to explain it. It's like about seven, eight kids kneeling down, looking back over their shoulders in like their underwear and socks. And you, you can tell they're afraid. You can just tell by the expressions on their face that this is a compromising situation. It's just, screams pedophilia this artwork his brother loves that stuff john podesta's into it too you know and it's weird it's weird at minimal people have to give you that much they like to call you crazy we make a couple connections and we go okay you're into all this fucked up shit you must be a pedophile you know because abc adds up to d people don't want to make those connections they don't want to make that leap and they call us crazy for doing so. And I forgot what I was doing, what I was going to say. I was going to make a point. And damn it, it makes me mad. I'm going to remember it later when I listen to this. And I'm going to be upset with myself. I just want you to know. So if you're watching later, you can kick me for me. Because I'm going to be kicking myself when I listen to this. Clinton says children torture, not just sexual. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's disgusting, the stuff that goes on and then it's even portrayed in his artwork, if that's what you were talking about. But I was talking about, I was taking it further, that actually goes on. But yeah, there's a lot of messed up stuff. And, you know, you start getting into figures of missing children and you start going down that rabbit hole and it gets fucking terrifying. You know, when you think that there are these, there, there exists these pedophile groups. Man, one was just busted up in Philadelphia out of that Catholic church, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, wasn't it? Out of that, running out of that Catholic church, 70 something priests, you know, and what, thousand victims? Pedophilia rings exist. People need to stop thinking it's crazy because people are being hurt while you think it's crazy. You need to start realizing that things that are fucked up happen. Just because you can't comprehend someone doing that doesn't mean it doesn't take place. These people don't think like you. They're psychopaths. Hey, Paul. How you doing? It's like we got a few people here with us. Jay, welcome, Jay. Curtis, Jim, Tail, Rob, welcome. No, but this stuff is real. I used to work at a truck stop, and they would train us on what to do if we found not just in underage prostitutes, but that what to do if we found underage prostitutes on the lot, because it would happen. You know, and luckily, I only worked there a year and a half. Luckily, it never happened to me. I did see prostitutes out on the lot, you know, never actually saw one. They were they were like unicorn to me. I worked night shift too, but I never saw one. But I was always terrified that I would, and I was always terrified that it would be a young girl because they'll take these young girls and they'll make them be prostitutes. And they would train us on how to find out and how to identify them and what to do if we saw one. It's a real problem. This stuff is real. It exists. And the leaders that are in power and control our world are pedophiles and Luciferian, and they do 
fucked up things, you know, and I want to think that's true, but they stay in power because you're not willing to open your mind up to that possibility. That's them right there worshiping their owl god Moloch. He relieves them of their guilt for everything they've done to us over the course of the past year in that ceremony. Hey, Paul, you're back. It was important for me to let you know that I did not agree with the Alex Jones theory. I just played that so we could kick it around. Paul says, just walked in the door from work. I need my conspiracy fix. Well, you're in luck because I decided to go a little longer a little while ago because people didn't show up for the first hour. For the first hour, it was me and Steve. So thank you, Steve, for staying here with me and helping me through that because that was rough, i to tell you. But I think a lot of times the number I'm looking at on the screen is not accurate, you know, or I don't know, could be, could be accurate. I hope it's not. But uh, so go ahead and comment anything you want. We'll talk about it. We can go a little longer if you guys like. Now we got about five people here. We can keep going. But. Steve says thousands and thousands of missing kids and they don't broadcast it. You don't hear it talked about very much at all. If you, if you see the numbers, I wish I had them in front of me because I don't want to misquote them, but they are astronomical. The figures for missing children in this country. And um, there's a correlation between not just sex trafficking and all of that, which, which is a large percentage of it, but also in the pedophilia rings and uh, the Luciferian cults that these people are a part of. And real children are in danger while everybody sits around and bickers over how crazy it is to believe that people in power torture and, and deal in children. If you would just start following the chains, it's a real event. It's really happening. If you would just start investigating, you would find out whatever you find out. But please find out something because it's real and it's happening. So always add a zero to the live views number. Oh, really? Wow. And that means sometimes when I'm watching Tim Black, he's got like a thousand people there and not a hundred. That's weird. That's crazy. Steve says, remember the milk cartons? You don't see them anymore. Yeah, you used to have, there used to be ads for missing children on the milk cartons. And there used to be a wall at Walmarts. Most Walmarts had a wall of missing children. But it's, it's astronomical. And you know where it's, where the largest amount of kids go missing in the state, in the United States? In Washington, Washington, D.C. They have the largest amount of missing kids. And coincidence i don't you know any good detective will tell you colombo used to say it all the time that there's no such thing as coincidence so i just think that we need to be able to look at these kind of things without the stigma of feeling like you're crazy because it's real so you're not crazy matter of fact conspiracy theories are real and you shouldn't be ashamed of those either you know <laughs> Conspiracies are real and theories are real. You put them together, still real. It was just designed and, and used to make you, used as a weapon, that, that phrase, to make you ashamed of thinking for yourself. Steve says Montauk was a kidnapping ring by the government. We almost watched my Montauk video tonight because I didn't make one this week. So we almost watched one of my old videos and I was going to settle on Montauk. But I watched it, and honestly, I was just like, oh, my God, this is so bad. I don't want to play it. Like, the, the, the sound, I've just gotten a lot better at video since then. So I need to remake the Montauk video and the MK Ultra video. But, yeah, Montauk was uh, a kidnapping ring. They did, did kidnap people. They did a lot of fucked up things, you know. And just that's just in the stuff that they admitted to from MK Ultra, the stuff that is known and you can look up for yourself. You got to know that there's more fucked up stuff that they didn't tell you about. And if you don't think so, then you're just naive. You know, 
But a lot of these shows, like Stranger Things, that little girl, Eleven, she's based out of Montauk. She's based on the Montauk Project, her character. Uh, the character uh, in Firestarter, the little girl, Drew Barrymore, played in Firestarter. She's based out of the Montauk Project. Um, but yeah, they, they, they experimented on children, transients, um, missing children. They even adopted children. They used children of soldiers. They used all kinds of children, but they definitely used missing and abducted children. They're not going to tell you that, but I'm sure they did. They definitely abducted people. There's, there's a lot of people that have come out about being abducted during the MK Ultra project and experimented on. Clinton says, look on the wall of every Walmart and you'll be blown away. The elite are sacrificing people, eating them and drinking blood. Look at the cakes they make in Hollywood of people cannibalism. He's talking about the spear cooking parties where they eat cakes made to look like people in pools of blood. You can look it up. All your favorite celebrities go to these parties. These are satanic. They're, uh, the, this one in particular is ran by that Maria Abramovich that is basically the Luciferian dark princess right now. She's there, Aleister Crowley, at the moment. But, uh, yeah, it's disgusting. And it's just, these they're cakes, but they're, they're made to look like human bodies laying in pools of blood. And, you know, there's heads on the table and all kinds of fucked up shit. They write on the walls in blood, weird things. And, and yeah, a lot of Hollywood and elites, all the elites and all their Hollywood big celebrities, they're all into it. They all go participate in it. You can look it up for yourself. It's called spirit cooking. It's another thing that's real. You got to wonder, are they doing this because it's trendy? You know, okay, I'm eating a body out of a pool of blood. And this, ugh, it's disgusting. Even the pictures are disgusting. But I don't know what's trendy about it. But I might just not be cool enough, you know. I am what to say. I am, I am, after all, a crazy conspiracy theorist. But I think it's satanic at best. These are just demonic parties and demonic gatherings with demonic intent at best i think david says goth chicks rule absolutely not saying they don't nothing against goth chicks unless you're in the illuminati then fuck you <laughs> i gotta say i gotta say you can get bent if you're in the illuminati Hi, Amy. It's good to see some people showing up. Gives me a little bit of hope. We'll go a little longer. Um, if you want to talk about anything, go ahead and mention it in the comments. We've kicked around a few things already. But we can kick around more if you want. We can go a little longer. I just need comments to feed me and give me stuff to talk about. Clinton says the cakes look so real. Oh, my God, they do. And the blood, too. The blood looks real, too. It's disgusting. Um, and they use act. They, she actually writes on the wall. She writes things on the wall in blood. It's part of the ritual. And for that, she does use real blood. I think it's animal blood, of course, but she does write on the walls in real blood. And it's just a bunch of weird twisted shit. She's got like little dolls covered in blood and there's all kinds of weird imagery. It's, it's very dark. A lot of the things the elites are into are very dark. And then if you want to see Illuminati rituals, look no further than most of your awards shows. A lot of times the Oscars and the Grammys and all of that, they have just actual Illuminati rituals carried out on stage. Beyonce does it all the time. David says, Holly weird. It could be that simple. They could be doing it just to be odd, you know, and sometimes you want to think that because I'll see people I like there. Like Will Ferrell, I saw him photographed at that fucking party. But that's twisted shit, you know? I like Will Ferrell, but I obviously know now that there's something about Will Ferrell that I don't like. Just like Tom Cruise being a Scientologist lets me know that there's there's justification for me not liking Tom Cruise. He's batshit crazy. Sorry if you're a Scientologist. I just shit all over your religion, but <laughs> it's ridiculous. You know, and I guess you could use the same argument against me. I'm a Christian. You could, 
I've had people say it to me that it's a, just as ridiculous, but I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I think it's more ridiculous and it's more ridiculous, especially when you factor in that the whole religion was created by a science fiction writer. L. Ron Hubbard was a very prolific science fiction writer. Uh, he didn't just write science fiction either. He wrote all kinds of books. Like I said, I worked at a truck stop. We sold L. Ron Hubbard books and he wrote even Westerns. He wrote all kinds of books. And Dianetics happens to be one of them. And these people have, may have built a religion around it and believe in Xenu and all of that. Matter of fact, if you know about Xeno, Xenu, you know some level seven Scientology shit that you pay a lot of money to learn. Clinton says you don't get in unless you're in, bro. Oh, to the party? Probably not. You know, I've seen a lot of interesting stuff lately about Johnny Depp being really deep in the Illuminati. That would suck. I hate it when it's somebody you like, you know. But some of the videos I've seen, I'm not going to get into it because I don't have an opinion either way. Like I said, I watch a lot of conspiracy stuff. I'm into it. So I don't always agree with it. But I saw some pretty wild ac accusations aimed at Johnny Depp recently that I definitely want to look into deeper. But it always bums me out when it's somebody you like. Like I've seen that uh, another rumor about a person I like a lot being part of an Illuminati shill is Stephen King. And man, that would bum me out. But, you know, I'm, I gotta wear my armor and can, and, you know, be ready for the fact that it could be anybody, you know, and he could be. When I think on it, he has a lot of imagery in his books, but, you know, you can do that. You can use your imagination and make things fit. And I don't want to do that with it, but I've heard some theories. David says, I mean, the devil said, let's put the alphabet in math. <laughs> Somebody evil decided to do that. I failed algebra. I got a 54. I remember it like it was yesterday. And at least that was algebra two. But man, when you start putting letters into math, I just got lost. It didn't make sense to me. And I think most of the reason why it didn't make sense to me is I didn't accept it because I didn't think it was going to ever be practical. I didn't think it was something that I would ever use. And I don't. So, so far as an adult, I was right. I don't use algebra. I never have. So it hasn't hurt me at all that I didn't learn it for whatever that's worth. But I'm also not super successful and I'm a stand-up comedian that hosts a conspiracy theory show. So <laughs> if that's what you inspire to be is a, uh, you know, stand-up comedian conspiracy theorist, then you're on the right track if you don't know al algebra. You can, you can achieve that without knowing algebra. So if, if this is what you attain to be, congratulations, you can be this without being. David says Johnny Depp is a Freemason, really? He's a Freemason? Now, why would that be? That's a little weird. Did you know that Jay-Z is? Jay-Z is a level 33 Freemason. But did you know that they don't even get to go to the same Freemasons uh, or whatever they call their um, clubs, lodges or whatever? They don't get to go to the same lodges as the whites. There's separate black Freemason clubs. Isn't that fucked up? But Jay-Z is a Freemason. I thought that was fascinating. Just goes to show you, man. Just goes to show you. It's all a show. It's all just to distract you and keep you from thinking about what's really important. Clinton says you don't get in Hollywood or music industry, especially hip hop, unless you're in, including but not limited to satanic homosexual initiations. Nothing against homosexual people. I'm just saying. No, and you're right. I've heard rappers talk about that, that they get you to do something gay and they photograph it and they use it to blackmail you. 
Glenn says black lodges only black people. Yeah, they have separate lodges. Isn't that crazy? It's the year 2018 and Jay-Z goes to an all-black Freemason Lodge. That's weird. I wouldn't be a part of that group, but but you have to wonder why he is. Gives him access to a certain amount of power. It lets him be Jay-Z. You know, he's right. Clinton's right. To get to a certain level of success in this country in the entertainment industry, you need to be in. You need to sell your soul. They talk about it. Why do you think they all talk about it? It's because they do sell their souls. They sell their souls for their fame. They sell their souls for that level of success. And they do the bidding of their Illuminati masters. <laughs> and I don't see why it's crazy to, to have those opinions. It's right there in front of you, and they tell you about it. You can look up, pick your favorite celebrity and look it up. Google it. There's a good chance you'll find them talking about how they sold their soul or the sacrifices that they made. Some will outright say they made a deal with the devil. Bob Dylan, there's a creepy interview with Bob Dylan where the guy, he, tells, he says he sold his soul a long time ago. And the guy asked him who he sold it to. And he's like, well, who do you think? Yeah, Clinton says he's privileged as a result, a billionaire. Jay-Z is a billionaire. So being part of a still segregated organization makes a little sense when you think about how much power you can glean from it. Let's see here. Yeah, you know, I've also had Freemasons argue with me that Freemasonry is not evil. That Freemason is not tied in with the Illuminati and New World Order agenda. Because they're a Freemason and they're a level five, six, seven, I don't know, whatever level the average person gets to. And they're not involved in the master plan, so they think you're crazy for thinking that there is a master plan. Well, what do you think they tell you at different levels? If you get a little bit of truth at each level, don't you think that there's a lot you don't know about your organization if you're only at like level seven, level 10, if you're only like a level 11 Freemason? Hell, I don't know what the average Freemason's level is, but we're talking about level 32 and above. These are the ones that are involved in, 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 and let in on the major plans and let in what's on what's really going on and shown what's going on behind the curtain. If you're not a level 33 Freemason, don't come at me with Freemason is this or that because you don't even know yet what it's fully about. Clinton says, think they worship or call on the bah Bahamut. They worship demons. The elite worship demons. Uh, for example, in, in, the, in the slideshow over here, I have a picture of their build up, their ceremony at a... Mm, I almost said the wrong thing, but they worship, they're worshiping the, the Al Malik at Bohemian Grove. But that particular demon takes away their guilt for everything they've done to us lessers over the course of the last year. They worship other demons as well. But hey, Russ. How you doing, man? I'm glad you could come by. This is Conspiracy Theories and Chill. We've been going, we've been going a little longer than normal tonight. We're at like an hour and a half right now. I'll probably wrap up here in a little bit, but I'm glad you could stop by. Check it out later on if you want to and watch the whole show. If you guys have any ideas or anything you want to talk about before we wrap up, go ahead and put it in the comments and we'll kick it around. In the meantime, I'm going to briefly talk about how to support the show so again and, and, and plug when the next one will be. We're going to do these until we can't do them anymore every week at Fridays at 6.30 p.m. Central. Um, right here from my Facebook page, I may start coming from the politics and stuff page again, like I said, if they'll have me back, because I feel like I can now. I feel like that I use my own music. I won't get kicked. So uh, I will ask. I'm going to. 
I will right after the feed, actually, David. So I'll let you know what they say. But uh, so if they if they're on board with it, I'll let you know, and we'll be coming from their page, and maybe I can get a few more eyeballs on the show. But uh, what was I saying? Oh, and there's also a link in the description if you want to uh, support the show on Patreon and become a financial supporter of the show. Help us get things like better microphones, better editing software, things like that. You can do that by becoming a supporter on Patreon. But you can also support the show for free by checking out my YouTube channel, Me on Things and Stuff, and liking, sharing, commenting on any video over there. I'll add a link to there in the description afterwards as well, or in the comment section as well. Lisa says Oliver North is the new president of the NRA. Yep. <clears throat> Isn't that hilarious? We can get into that. That could be a whole show. Clinton says, love the show, man. Take care. Positive, positivity and light to you. Thank you, man. Right back at you. But uh, I think we're going to wrap up for now. We'll see you again next Friday at 6.30 p.m. Central right here. Um, at least next Friday, we'll be right here for my Facebook page again. After that, we may move back over to politics and stuff. So thanks for coming, and we'll see you next time on Conspiracy Theories and Chill.